Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about the launch sales for Link's Awakening and the Nintendo Switch Lite in Japan, which you would figure should be a pretty big market for both titles because Japan cares a lot about handheld gaming in comparison to the rest of the world. Obviously the Switch Lite being the most handheld version of the Switch itself. Uh, and the sales actually underwhelmed in some regards but we're going to talk about it because it's still pretty impressive and Link's Awakening itself is obviously one of the most successful handheld Zelda games of all time uh, for those who don't know it is my very first ever Zelda experience I played Link's Awakening on a bus way long ago when I was a kid then Link's Awakening DX and obviously now we have Link's Awakening on Nintendo Switch fully remastered just called Link's Awakening I kind of like that they didn't really throw the remastered or the HD after they say hey look it's just Link's Awakening it's been 20 plus years here you go Play this game again uh, and see what you think. So the sales are in, and first let's just focus on the games. And I'm getting all of this data uh, from Famitsu, uh, and I am using Nintendo Life as the overall source for this information. I'll put a link to Nintendo Life and Famitsu down in the description if you'd like to double check on the sources. Uh, and at the number one spot, obviously this week was The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, brand new game. So 141,375 units. Now, if you're wondering how this compares to Breath of the Wild back at the launch of Switch, it sold around 180,000 units. Units. So it only sold about 40,000 units less with a game that should not be as popular as Breath of the Wild. So that's actually a really great start for Link's Awakening in Japan. And we'll have to see how the week two, week three sales and all that go and, and see, just see where Link's Awakening is going to end up. Because I have this general worldwide prediction that I think Link's Awakening is going to sell about 5 million units worldwide when it's all said and done. Of course, you know, we're talking years down the road when it's all said and done. So it'll be interesting to see uh, where it ends up falling in Japan in comparison to prior handheld specific Zelda games you know the top-down style ones that have been exclusive to handhelds basically outside of Four Swords Adventures uh, since Ocarina of Time came out now if you look at the rest of the chart there are three PlayStation 4 games including at the number two and at number three spots Monster Hunter World Iceborne Master Edition uh, is up there, you know, at 39,594 units, moving around 300,000. I believe that is uh, the version that comes with the, all the brand new DLC. Uh, so that's not too shocking to see that up there because Monster Hunter is a very popular IP, especially in Japan. Uh, we see eFootball winning 11 2020 from Konami chiming in at number three on PlayStation 4, moving 19,249 units. But now we get into the bevy of Nintendo releases, including one more new one uh, that's more of a PlayStation 4 port, but it's still nice to have. First off, Super Mario Maker 2 is in at number four, moving 14,905 units. That has now moved over 600,000 units in Japan. Hand, as you're seeing on the charts there. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is still in the top five, having released last December at 12,266, having moved over 3.2 million units in just Japan. Crazy numbers. Uh, and then we see Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch. Again, I said, kind of like a port uh, from PlayStation 4, a late port, but it moved 11,237 units in its first week on the market. Uh, Minecraft for Switch is still just chugging along, moving 10,813 units, moving over 900,000 units in Japan. Probably going to move over a million when it's all said and done. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe chimes in at number 8, moving 10,786 units, and uh, you know almost at 2.5 million. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is getting up there. Uh, and then we also see... Fishing Spirits Nintendo Switch version by Bandai Namco, uh, moving another close to 10,000, 9.8,000. Uh, and actually, a decent amount on Switch for a third party game that's uh, all about fishing. Uh, at 170,000. Uh, and then, obviously, one of the more recent big AAA releases is still there at number 10 for PlayStation 4 and Borderlands 3, moving 8.8 thousand units. Uh, now, obviously, we got to talk about the Switch sales next because this is the launch that might people might care about more than Link's Awakening. Because Link's Awakening is going to kind of trail off and, you know, Luigi's Mansion 3 is going to pop up, Pokemon Sword and Shield, all that stuff. Who knows, maybe even Ring Fit Adventure in December. Uh, but Switch Lite is potentially going to be the number one selling unit in Japan for quite some time of Switch uh, just because it's $200 so it's $100 cheaper and it's portable and that's what Japan cares about more than TV play uh, but we got some interesting numbers here so the new Nintendo Switch Lite or, you know, Nintendo Switch Lite with the new moniker in front of it on the charts, moved 177,936 units. Now, that is actually really, really good. Again, launching outside of a holiday period, uh, outside of a launch period in general for a system. Uh, but 
Nintendo stock did end up dropping about 3.7% or so yesterday just because the projections from a lot of stock analyst companies were that it would move 300,000 units in Japan. So it did fell short of stock analyst projections. I don't know obviously what Nintendo's internal projections were, but 177,000 units is not terrible by any stretch of the means and this is in addition to the fact that the nintendo switch itself the og the one with the dock and all that for 300 also moved 61,804 units last week which is a lot that puts the combined total at over you know 230,000 plus units sold of switches last week uh in a week when only 140,000 of the you know, new Zelda games sold. So uh, pretty crazy. And obviously when you compare it to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 4 Pro and Xbox One X and Xbox One S, as you're seeing on the chart, uh, Switch is kind of in a league of its own right now. Uh, Nintendo Switch had already passed PlayStation 4's total sales a little bit ago. Uh, and it's only going to get worse as the light and the Switch continue to tag team that sales chart uh, moving forward. Um, obviously, uh, I think it might have even surpassed the 3DS. Wait, no, no, not it hasn't surpassed 3DS overall yet. Sorry, these charts are only showing the new Nintendo 2DS and the new Nintendo 3DS. They're not showing the original 3DS sales. So Switch hasn't passed that yet, but it, it, it's getting there. Uh, and obviously, it's passed Vita. But, uh, you know, when I sit back and I look at the charts, I start to feel like uh the switch lights doing just fine uh maybe it didn't sell exactly what analysts thought it might do uh but again we're outside of that holiday period and Link's awakening while a big launch is technically like a remaster of an old game uh it didn't launch you know switch Lite didn't launch with a brand new big name title like if switch Lite had launched alongside pokemon sword and shield you can bet these launch numbers would be significantly higher. So uh, it's one of those things where there is a special edition Switch Lite coming out with Sword and Shield in November. So I think we need to really wait till we hit the holidays to find out how popular Switch Lite is going to end up being in Japan. Because I have a feeling uh, it's going to sell multiple millions of units over the next few months in Japan. So uh, just stay tuned. I mean, people aren't going to go buy a Switch Lite when they don't when when it's not tied to a game they necessarily want to buy right now. Uh, the Link's Awakening numbers are obviously pretty impressive, but I don't know if it's going to have as long of a tail of sales as Breath of the Wild is, but Breath of the Wild still every now and then bounces back into the top 10 on um, Famitsu. Uh, so I, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens with that, but I'm pretty excited. And obviously, we know we have Luigi's Mansion 3 coming up on Halloween. Can you believe Nintendo's actually going to release it on Halloween? That's crazy. Uh, something to play uh, fresh on my favorite holiday of the year. I love Halloween. Um, seriously, I don't know if there is a holiday that I get more excited by than, than this one. But anyways, uh, that's all I got for you guys today. So hopefully, uh, you actually, you know what? I, I kind of just want to know your guys' thoughts on the sales themselves. Uh, you know, are you impressed by these sales in Japan? Uh, impressed by the Switch Lite sales? Do you think it underwhelmed? Uh, do you own a Switch Lite? Because I actually am having a hard time finding anyone who owns a Switch Lite because so many of the people I know already owned a Switch and didn't really feel like buying a light. So uh, do you own it? We talked yesterday how uh, potentially there's some drifting issues starting to happen. Uh, are you experiencing those drifting issues or, you know, is it not happening to you yet? Uh, what are your thoughts on the Switch Lite in general? What are your thoughts on Link's Awakening as well? That's been like the big launch lately. There's been some controversy because of the frame rate drops from 60 to 30 back to 60. Uh, even some transitional frame rates that seem to drop to like 15 or something when you go between screens and scenes. Uh, so that's something just to, to note and keep in mind. I don't know if it's bothering people. Maybe you're all in love with it. Obviously, there's a big debate on if it's worth 60 bucks. Uh, I'm actually working on a video right now about the value of games and the subjectiveness of it. And uh, Link's Awakening is going to be a big topic in that one on whether it is worth that $60 price tag despite being a remaster, despite being an, o an older game that's not as long, you know, is, is it the same value as Breath of the Wild because they both launched at 60 bucks. So uh, there's a big debate to happen there, and I can't wait to make that video. But uh, until next time, folks, I am Nathaniel RoboJets from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you for tuning in, and I will catch you in the next video.